Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to make some rose blossom syrup. So nearby my house I found a big bush of wild roses and they've just exploded into bloom. There are hundreds and hundreds of flowers on this wild rose bush. But anyway, I picked a whole bunch of just the petals here. So instead of getting the whole flower, I've got just the petals. It's so fragrant. It smells amazing. So if you're not new around here, you'll know we already did this. Not last year, I believe, but the year before, we made a rose petal jelly. This year, though, I want to make a rose syrup. I use it to sweeten my coffee or tea, and I've already done chamomile uh, honey or chamomile syrup, and I've also done calendula as well. So rose is going to be another awesome flavor to have on the docket. So if you want to learn to make rose petal syrup with wild rose blossoms, keep watching. And hey, by the way, if you're new here, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today, rose syrup. So for this project, it's only a few ingredients and it doesn't take much time at all. You're going to need some rose petals. As best you can, only use petals. Do not use any from the store because unfortunately those flowers have been sprayed. Uh, ideally, it would be a fragrant rose that you grow in your garden or perhaps a wild rose bush that is not treated with any chemicals. That's what I have here. I am putting on my recipe about one cup tightly packed, but I think I have a little bit more than that right now. So as much as you can get your hands on. You're also going to need two cups of white granulated sugar. You're also going to need water or a liquid. I have a hibiscus rose hip tea and I'm making a cold brew of it just to have in the house. I think I'm going to use this water in my rose petal syrup. It'll impart that pink color. Uh, alternatively, you could use some pink food coloring and just about one cup of water. I also have a measuring cup here to keep my measurements accurate. I have a medium sized pot and I have a small pot as well. I'm going to use the small pot to heat up the lid and the rim of my jar, which leads to our next ingredient. Uh, you'll need a jar and a lid for that jar. You're also gonna need something with a little bit of an acidic kick. You could use uh, lemon juice, just about a tablespoon of it. Um, I'm going to be using orange rind. So I'm going to rind a little bit of the orange part off of an orange and add that into my syrup. And that'll just brighten up that floral flavor. So, oh, I lied. You'll also need cheesecloth, a strainer, a spoon, and probably some tongs to handle your uh, hot jars with and maybe some oven mitts. And probably some stuff for doing a cleanup because I make a mess with everything I do, so uh, make sure you have your cleaning supplies on hand. But other than that, I think that's everything for this recipe. If you're interested in making it, let's do it. Okay, so first things first, I am going to turn the heat on uh, to a medium heat, and I am going to measure out one cup of liquid. There's one. This is a half cup measuring spoon, and there's two. And now I'm going to right away add all of my rose petals into the water. So I didn't wash these rose petals, but I did give them a good amount of time outside. So hopefully we don't have any uh, stowaways ending up in our syrup. But don't worry, we are going to strain all of this out with a coffee filter and with uh, some cheesecloth to ensure that we don't have any bugs in there. So that is there. Let me show you what it looks like from over top. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the lid on it and I'm going to bring it up just below a simmer. I'm not going to let this simmer and we'll come back when we get to that point. All right, so I switched pots to a smaller pot because it felt like there wasn't enough liquid, but I know there's enough liquid. So a smaller pot is a better option. Um, it has been just about two minutes now. The petals are starting to soften and you can see the pink liquid is sort of turning them translucent. So now what I'm gonna do, now that it's just below a simmer, we don't wanna simmer, we just wanna coax out all the flavor out of these roses without burning any of it. So I'm going to turn the heat down all the way to low, and I'm gonna put a lid on this pot, 
and I'm gonna set a timer for one hour and we're gonna let it steep on low for one hour. No simmering, no bubbling, just a hot steep like this. Isn't that beautiful? I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. It smells so amazing in here. All right, let me get that lid and I will see you in an hour. So while I wait for the rose petals, I am going to get the orange rind ready. Can you tell the difference between a washed one? These ones are like, they have like a white powder on them. Anyway, wash your fruit. So I'm gonna start by taking a small paring knife and I'm just going to take a really thin slice of the outer skin, see? See, there's no white. The white part, the pith, it's bitter. So this is just gonna get that orange flavor without the bitterness which will brighten up the super, super sweet rose syrup. Okay. All right, so it's been an hour. The rose water looks amazing it's like this beautiful rose gold pink it's so pretty it's like rose gold champagne so now we're going to turn off the heat and i'm going to put another timer on for one hour and that's just going to sit and cool down on the stove i'm adding my orange uh zest just a little bit i'm not mixing it in i'm just putting it on top i'm going to put the lid on and we're gonna come back in an hour. All right, the second timer just finished. And now we can, where did that spoon go? Now we can strain out the liquid and get started on the part where we're gonna make it into a syrup. So I've got here my cold brew thing. It's like a glass thing with a filter inside. You could use a strainer. That's what I used to use before I had this. Um, but I'm going to just pour this liquid, which is still warm, but it's not hot anymore. I'm gonna pour it through the strainer, and then I'm going to rinse the pot, and then we'll add it back to the stove. Okay, so now that all of the rose water has dripped out, I am going to Pour this beautiful liquid. It's got such a pretty color. Look at that. Isn't that so nice? Anyway, oh, it smells so good. So I'm gonna pour that back into the pot, which I rinsed out. Oh shoot, I forgot to measure it. Perfect. So there's one cup of liquid. Amazing. Now I'm gonna turn the heat on here to like a medium, medium high, just to get it coming up to temperature. As soon as it starts to sort of just about simmer, I'm gonna start adding sugar in and we're gonna dissolve it one scoop at a time until we've got it all in there. That should be perfect. All right, so the liquid is nice and hot now. I'm gonna add my first scoop of sugar. I'm just gonna stir that to dissolve it in. So I've added all the sugar now and it's almost entirely dissolved. We're just gonna wait for it to be dissolved all the way. 
and I'm gonna bring it up just to a boil and we're gonna hold it at a boil for one minute. After the one minute, we're gonna put it into some sterilized hot jars. So I'm going to wash the jars and get them ready while this heats up. Hello. Hi, will you lock the door please? Yep. It says it's not supposed to rain to by eight. Okay. Oh, that's weird. What do you think? Should I bring my umbrella or not? If it doesn't make much of a difference to you, I would say bring it just because it does look a little weird. It looks like they, it could rain in random spots. Okay, so this has come up to a boil now. I just turned the heat down a little bit from high to a medium. And now all of this foamy stuff, I'm gonna just skim it off. That'll just be any of the impurities that didn't get caught by the coffee filter. Little bits of dust or pollen or whatever. I'm just turning the heat up a little bit to get that boil a little bit, a little bit stronger. And as soon as we hit that boil that I want, a little bit more of a rolling boil, then we'll put a timer on for one minute. All right, that's what I want. Now, timer, one minute. All right, my one minute just went off. I've got my two hot jars right here. Actually, I'm gonna move them onto here so that they can stay there and be hot. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is turn off the heat on my um, rose syrup. Oh, you can't see the jars. Hold on one sec. Okay, so now I am going to scoop. Oh my god, look at the color. It's so pretty. I'm going to scoop this and just set it into my hot jars. A little bit extra. Hmm. I'm just gonna pour it into this bowl so that my pot doesn't get covered in hot sugar. All right, and I saw some drippage, so I'm just gonna wipe around the top. Okay, then I'm gonna place on my hot lids. Look at that color. All right, so I'm gonna leave them here to cool down. And it doesn't really matter to me if they seal because I'm going to use them pretty shortly. Uh, but if yours do not seal, if you don't hear the jars pop, then make sure you use them within a month. I'll probably use mine within a month, but um, I will uh, wait for these to cool down and then we'll do a taste test. See you then. Okay friends, so it's a couple of days later now. The jars have completely cooled down, both jars sealed, which is awesome. We got that nice pop sound uh, so that we know that the lids are sealed. I'm gonna be placing this one in my apothecary shelf for use throughout the season. And then the little jar is what we're going to open today to do some taste testing. Uh, we're gonna do two taste tests. Taste test number one is just dipping a spoon in and tasting the actual uh, syrup itself. Taste number two, I wanna do it the way that I actually will use the rose syrup. So I've got some tea that I had in the fridge. Um, I just put loose leaf tea into water in the fridge overnight, and then I pour it through a strainer in the morning. I do that with coffee. I do it with chamomile now. Pretty much it's like a new hobby is like brewing cold brews of different teas that I like. I, If you're not doing it, you should try it because it's actually like a lot of fun. Anyway, this tea is a blueberry green tea. It has actual little blueberries in it. It's from my favorite store. Alex got it for me. Um, a tea store that is called Tea Store in Ottawa, Ontario. So I'll fill up my cup. I add a little bit of ice. I actually usually add a lot of ice. And there we go. And now, so for taste test number two, we're gonna just add a little bit of this to the um, drink to sweeten it up a bit and see if we can catch the floral taste. So I did a little dip of my spoon. We'll leave that to dissolve in and then I'm gonna taste it. Do you see the texture, by the way? Here's the texture. 
it's like perfect. It's like perfect syrup texture. Wow. Wow, that's so floral. It tastes like ro- It smells just like roses. And it tastes so sweet and floral. Mmm, this would be good in hot tea also. Or drizzled over a cheesecake maybe. Mm, that would be so like fancy schmancy. Oh gosh, there's a squirrel in my backyard. Get out of here. He saw me, he's leaving. Ooh, that's nice. That's an, I recommend making this. All right, let me try the drink. It's overpoweringly blueberry-ish, but that's because the tea is blueberry. Okay, so I can't tell that it's in the blueberry um, tea. The tea is too strongly blueberry-ish, but wow, I wish you could smell it. I really wish you could. It smells so good. It smells like a bouquet of roses and sweet. Oh gosh, it's lovely. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you the final, the final thing and my final thoughts on it, which are, I think you should try it. If you have edible flowers that grow around you, I would say, do this. Like lilac is one you could make syrup with. Um, wild violets is another one. Roses is another one. I'm gonna try calendula this summer. Um, I've done chamomile before too. So, I mean, give it a shot. Make a really strong tea with an edible flower or maybe an herb would be cool. Maybe like a basil, maybe like one of the different varieties of basil I'll try and do a weird syrup thing with this summer too. Let me know if you have any suggestions of a syrup you want to see me try to make. And um, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you could, it really does help the channel. Uh, and yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. And hey, by the way, thank you so much to all of my patrons. Here are my patrons supporting me this month. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. Uh, patrons, you will be getting a recipe card for this uh, recipe of the rose jelly or the rose syrup, sorry. And you will also be getting a coloring page of a rose branch because I was inspired to draw roses. So that's what you get for this one. Uh, if you'd like to join my Patreon, you will get access to the private Discord where we chat about all kinds of stuff um, and you also get access to those coloring pages and recipes that I share and at certain tiers you also get early access to videos so check out the links in the description if you'd like to join and uh, check out all the other links in there too because all the ways to support me are down in the description of the videos okay I think that's all for today I'm gonna go outside and hang out in the garden with my iced tea and I'll see you next time bye